بمناسبة عيد الفطر المبارك نعنيكم بهذا العيد ونقول كل عام وانتم بخير وتقبل الله منا وانتم صالح الاعمال. I would like to wish all of you selamat hari raya عيد الفطر. I wish all my friends whom I consider family myself, a wonderful Eid Mubarak. To you and your loved ones. A wonderful Eid Mubarak to you. A blessed Eid Mubarak to you. Wishing everyone a safe and joyous Eid. Eid Mubarak. A blessed Eid Mubarak to you. Eid Mubarak to everyone. And I would like to wish all of you Selamat Hari Raya Eid Fitri. Selamat Hari Raya Aidil Fitri. Maaf Zahir dan Batin. The world is moving forward. This phase of suffering will soon pass us by. Let us pause and reflect on the human condition. Many problems facing the world today are the result of unsustainable choices. We need not continue this destructive cycle. We can change ourselves. We can change the world. The time is now to usher in a renaissance. Compassion, ecological healing, sustainable growth, inclusive development. Islamic finance is one of the most valuable tools we can use to secure the world's future. INSEAF brings Islamic finance to the world. INSEAF instills knowledge conscientiously we forge leaders to build a better future for all. Be the change the world needs with INSEAF. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I'm here to talk to you about uh, what is INSEAF. 
the historical roles of INSEF and what we have done for the last uh, 15 years. INSEF was established in 2005 by Central Bank of Malaysia and Negara Malaysia. Since its establishment, INSEF has moved forward to become the focus university for the development of Islamic finance. Our mandate as envisioned by the Central Bank of Malaysia is to produce talents for the global Islamic financial services industry. And we have done that. We have produced more than 2,000 graduates coming from 70 countries. So what is unique about INSEA? I can mention four main factors that is unique about INSEA. One, it is the only university in the world that is established by a central bank which focuses on Islamic finance. And that is the uniqueness of INSEA. Second uniqueness of INSEA is that it is comprising of not only faculty members who are academics, but also faculty members who are from the industry. INSEAF has recruited uh, ex uh, or retired industry captains who join us as professors in the faculty. Apart from that, we have another component we call professor of practice. These are practically the current captains of the industry who come and co-teach at INSEAF. For example, they may teach one third of the semester or they may teach half of the semester together with our faculty. So the, the professor practice brings to the classroom real world experience. They discuss issues faced by the industry and shared with our students. So basically what our students get is they get from the horse's mouth knowledge about the, the industry experience, the industry issues and how those issues are being resolved at the higher level. So, so as I said, first is you get a university that is established by the central bank. It is very much an industry driven university. The faculty members are either ex retired uh, from the industry or currently CEOs or captains of the industry. And the fourth one, which is also unique about INSEAF, is that in our Senate, we have 50% of our Senate members are from the industry. They could be bankers, they could be takaful CEOs, they could be head of accounting auditing firm, or they could even be head of a legal firm. So they are in our Senate. What is a Senate? Senate is essentially a body in the university that oversees the academic matters of the university. So in our Senate, which comprises 50% of the industry, they are looking at the quality of our academic program. So in essence, what you get in ECF is that you not only get academic component, but you also get the practical aspects, the industry aspects of Islamic finance. So, so instead of being a university for the industry, it takes into account the academic requirement as well as the industry requirement of our students. So students will be able to experience and get knowledge from the academics as well as from the captors of the industry. So that is unique about it. We have two trends that we see in this COVID-19. The first trend is the digitalization trend. More and more people are using digital means for their transaction. It could be for e-commerce, or for the financial services. And the second trend that we see is the concern for the environment, concern for sustainability, concern for climate change. So we individuals are wanting to have a better planet when we live. So in this particular case, what we do at INSEAF is that we have created a new program called MBA Sustainability. So this new program takes into account the digital trend as well as the sustainability trend. So students who come and study at INSEAD in this MBA program will be able to learn about Islamic finance, will be able to learn about sustainable business, will be able to learn the, the digitalization aspects. So what we do is that we incorporate the fintech into our curriculum. We bring the captains of the industry of the fintech to come and teach in our curriculum, in our program. At the same time, we have done a number of work advising companies, banks, and, and of course, central banks in terms of how do you implement value-based intermediation, how do you implement sustainability in your agenda. So we bring those sustainability agenda into our curriculum. So students will be able to learn from the horse's mouth, those people who are experts in these areas, and will be able to guide students uh, to, to do work in this particular area. In relation to this, what we also do is that we have incorporated action-based learning. So action-based learning is a technique that we train our students to become mini consultants. They solve real-world problem. So in this in this particular case, the real-world problem would be the sustainability problem. So students will learn about issues in sustainability, and they pro they will then analyze and propose solutions to the sustainability uh, issues. Instead, 
will continue to be an Islamic finance university. However, the uniqueness of INSEF is that it will take into account the future trends. INSEF will also focus on the digital applications. Uh, so we are working with a number of fintech companies in order to bring them into the classroom, in order to produce our graduates who are well versed in fintech. For example, as an example that we have today is that we have signed with Academy Science Malaysia we are, where we are going to manage an Islamic fintech fund. This fund will focus on develop, developing and nurturing potential fintech companies, startup companies. So at our campus, we will then provide an innovation lab where we will be training our students and also allowing the startups to come to INSEF, use our facilities for them to develop Islamic fintechs. And being a university that is dedicated for Islamic finance and Islamic social finance, we know what are the areas that we need to focus in order to bring more, up, more population into the Islamic fintech area. So those areas that we have, we have identified will be looked upon, will be analyzed by our students and also potential startup companies who will be using our facilities in order to bring about more fintech and therefore would support the issue of financial inclusion among the public in Malaysia and abroad. In this COVID-19 era also, we need to be nimble. Okay, we need to be nimble. We need to focus on how to be successful in this challenging time. I think one of the key things that we see in order to be very successful is to have a clear vision. You need to have vision. You need to know what your organization wants to be three years, five years down the road. As a leader, clear vision is very important. But apart from having a clear vision, you also need to have another component that is a very strong leadership. Without strong leadership and good supporting staff, you will not achieve your objective. So hence, strong leadership coupled with an effective management, supporting leaders will enable the organization to grow and move forward. But at the same time, bear in mind that having strong leadership, having clear vision and strong support system will not be successful unless you are nimble. You are able to adjust and take you know, advantage of the challenges that you face currently and in the future. So with that uh, components, inshallah, I believe that you can be successful organization. OIC Today, leaders of today, leaders of tomorrow. Assalamualaikum. Uh, good evening for those of you joining us from uh, Malaysia, Indonesia, Brunei and other parts of Southeast Asia. Um, good morning, good evening, good night, at wherever you are in the other parts of the world. Um, today's um, open day session is actually focused on uh, not just our local uh, participants or local applicants uh, for the NCF programs for the upcoming intakes, but also um, other parts of the world. So uh, thank you um, and welcome to INSEAS Virtual Open Day. So my name is Muhammad Iftita Suratmin. I represent the Sales, Marketing and Corporate Communications of INSEAF. And I'm very excited to take you through today's session as we discover INSEAF through a few conversations with our faculty, as well as some of my colleagues from the uh, support uh, systems of INSEAF. Um, you've heard earlier um, our president and CEO, uh, Professor Azmi Omar, uh, speaking about um, how INSEAF had actually weathered through the COVID-19 uh, pandemic uh, situation in the last year in 2020. And um, the, the situation in Malaysia right now is looking quite critical at the moment um, into 2021. Although despite we uh, are expecting a lot of um, positive outcomes at the end, uh, I guess situation is just not allowing for that uh, at the moment which is why we gathered a whole lot of um, um, yourselves to be together today with us to listen to what we have to uh, offer in terms of um, how we uh, um, uh, conduct our programs um, during the pandemic, as well as to learn about what are the programs that you may be interested in and, and, and go in depth in there. Now, I want you to, to, to pay attention to all of my colleagues here with the name INCF uh, in front, right? And um, they are all here to assist you. 
um, they are on the chat board um, for a reason because they are here to assist your, you with your questions. And uh, the session today is going to be um, mainly interactive through the chat board and not through conversations um, one by one with each and every one of you because that will be very um, disruptive and it may drag uh, the session in, in, in a way. So I hope you can make full use of the chat screen um, type your questions there and um, you, you may also uh, speak, uh, I mean, chat privately with our, uh, with my colleagues who have the NCF uh, initials in front. They'll be able to uh, help you through, inshallah. Now, I hope everything is doing well on your end, uh, wherever you are in terms of uh, which country you are at. Um, I can see some Middle Eastern, um, maybe from some, some from the, uh, uh, the, the from, from India as well, from Pakistan maybe. Uh, welcome to the session, sirs. Um, thank you very much for joining us. Um, and um, I'm going to go through a few um, uh, uh, conversations, like I said, with um, our our colleagues, with our professors, um, and our uh, associate dean. So we'll start with um, Professor Dr. Iskandar. Uh, Dr. Iskandar is actually one of our um, very prominent uh, uh, faculty. He's been around for quite some time with INSEF, I think more than uh, seven years now. Um, he is the, uh, the Associate Dean of, this, of uh, the School of Graduates and Professional Studies. Um, and he will be able to uh, give you more insights or more uh, clarity about all of the programs that we have at INSEAF. Um, now, before we go through that, um, just a short introduction. I'm pretty sure you, you already know what INSEAF is, uh, but just to, to reiterate, um, INSEAF was established by the Bank Negara Malaysia, which is the Central Bank of Malaysia. Very, very rarely that you get uh, to hear that a uh, university was set up by a central bank. This is one of the unique things about INSEAF. We were set up in 2005, so that makes it uh, 15 years of operations at INSEAF. Um, right now, we have uh, been around for 15 years. And when we were set up, our mandate was actually to uh, produce high caliber talent uh, pipeline for Malaysia as well as the global Islamic finance industry, right? So as we know it, Islamic finance was booming uh, back then 15 years ago and it's still booming now. Um, and they, are, they have been lacking in terms of uh, human capital. So we are mandated to actually train the professionals um, and give uh, the right qualifications for people to uh, then practice uh, Islamic finance, right? Now, in 2019, NCF has been inducted into the top 1% uh, business schools in Malaysia and top 5% uh, business school programs in the world. Um, this is through our accreditation with the Association of Advanced Collegiate Schools of Business or AACSB accreditation. Now, what does that mean for all of you is that the AACSB accreditation accredits uh, business schools like uh, Stanford, um, UPenn, even uh, the National University of Singapore and, and so on and so forth. The top 5% in the world. Um, I know some of you might have questions like how, um, how is NCF's uh, um, credibility in your countries? Uh, we are currently working through our business development arm uh, on how to get um, as much country recognitions from uh, individual countries. So that is a work in progress. But while that is happening, our AACSB accreditation speeds fast uh, as the uh, global accreditation body. Now, uh, maybe some of you have already researched, uh, done some research for NCF through our uh, website, or if you haven't followed our, our social media, our social media has a lot of information about what we have um, in terms of um, offering as well as what we do uh, on a on a day to day basis. So I'm going to start with uh, Dr. Iskandar. He will take you through about uh, the School of Graduates and Professional Studies as well as to go through um, the program briefing with Dr. Iskandar. So stay tuned. If you have any questions, again, ask any of my colleagues in with the INCF um, uh, title at the front. Chat with them, and they'll be able to help you. Hopefully, inshallah. So enjoy the show. It's going to be um, a very interactive one uh, as much as you can. Any questions you have, just ask. Okay, so let's start the program briefing. Um, first, I'm going to speak about the PhD program. Um, actually, we have uh, three PhD program at INSEF. The first one is PhD by coursework and dissertation. Um, second one is PhD by research. 
And then the last one, which is highly customized, uh, that is only for selected people. So I'll try to skip that one. Uh, that's the PhD, what we call as an industry PhD. So let me just go through uh, quickly about the PhD program. Um, why we split the PhD program into two parts. Uh, first PhD by coursework and dissertation, and the second one is PhD by research. The basic idea is actually quite simple. We want to differentiate people uh, at entry. So people who already have substantial knowledge in Islamic finance with relevant working experience, so they can actually go to PhD by research. But for those who actually have maybe lack of understanding in Islamic finance um, and probably coming from different areas, um, then the ideal will be PhD by coursework and dissertations. Um, there are two major differences between uh, coursework and dissertation and also by research. First, by PhD by coursework and dissertation, as you can see, you have to do 13 plus 1, which means that you have to do 13, co 13 courses, including two, 11 core, 2 elective, and there is one subject that what we call as proposal writing. Okay, so all in all, you have to do 14 courses. Um, so this is basically for PhD by research. So you might wonder why you have to take all these courses because our idea is that when you want to do research in Islamic finance, you actually have to be prepared and equip yourself with the fundamental knowledge. So if you already taken these courses, for example, you at a master's level, then you can actually move straight away to PhD by research. Okay, so, so this is the differentiation. Whether you have the fundamental knowledge or you don't. Uh, so generally, people who have done you know, masters which is related to Islamic finance, have working experience, and, and have a clearer idea, so then they can move on to PhD by research. But if they don't, and they really need some knowledge and you know preparatory courses and everything, then they have to do PhD by coursework and dissertation. So that is the first difference. The second difference is that for PhD by coursework and dissertation, you only have to do what we call as the dissertations. And PhD by research, you have to do basically what we call as, you know, thesis. So what is the difference? Basically the depth of the coverage. So by dissertation, you know, your contribution has does not have to be as substantial or as, as, uh, as more, uh, I would say, rigor as compared to PhD by research. So that is the differentiation between the two. And the other small differentiation is that for PhD by coursework, you have what we call as a comprehensive exam. Uh, so that's in a nutshell, the difference between the two programs. However, the most important thing that you need to understand is that regardless whether you do PhD by coursework or you do PhD by research, you must understand the fact that, you know, what we are what we are trying to achieve from this program is that we are trying to basically advance the frontier of knowledge. We are trying to basically provide a clearer uh, clarity on the issues which is related to Islamic finance, whether you are doing fundamental or even applied research. So your contribution has to be new, uh, I would say, uh, uh, new and and not repeating, you know, uh, the work of other people. So it has to be original. Uh, and and he has to be pushing the frontier of knowledge, especially our understanding about issues and also uh, challenges and, and whatever, which is related to you know bringing a new understandings or noble understanding or an original understanding towards you know making Islamic finance knowledge a bit more you know advanced than what it is right now. So that is our PhD program for you, uh, and you can see the courses. Um, some of these courses. Uh, uh, similar to PhD by research. Uh, so when you go to, when you join PhD by research, you only have to do these um, seven courses. Uh, as compared to PhD by course, you have to do uh, 14 courses. Um, so once you complete the courses, you have to defend your proposal. Once you defend your proposal, then you have to start writing your dissertation or your thesis. And then eventually you will have Waiwa Wose, and corrections, and before you are conferred the, the doctor title. So before I end, I have to say this. Uh, so far, uh, we have produced more than 100 PhDs, uh, close to 120. And this is our one of our top program where it's quite competitive to get into the program. And even our graduation rate is not you know, more than 50%. Uh, 
uh, because you know the program is quite competitive to get in and it's quite competitive to graduate as well uh, but once you graduate from our phd uh, you know you can see the value of it and in fact a number of our phd great alumni are doing extremely well not, uh, in many of the universities and some of them even have their own startup some of them are even working as a policy maker but they all are doing ex well uh, well respected in their domain of knowledge and and we are quite proud of the, the 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 doctors or the graduates that we have produced from this program so that is about our phd program um thank you so much um and and i hope if you are really interested uh, you can actually contact the right person uh, to know more about our phd programs so again thank you so much okay uh, let me start the briefing for MSc program. Um, our MSc is actually um, one of our best-selling program. Uh, we started MSc um, many, many years ago. Uh, initially, it was called Masters in Islamic Finance. Uh, then eventually, we changed the name to Masters of Science in Islamic Finance. Um, there are quite a number of reasons why we use the word science, and that is also a reflection of what the program is all about. First, uh, there are quite substantial quantitative element in this particular program. Um, so, um, and it's also uh, uh, designed uh, to be academically rigor. Uh, why so? Uh, because the objective of this program is first to, as a bridge program, was a bridging program uh, towards our PhD program. So majority of the students who actually wanted to do PhD uh, will actually join MSc first, and then they can pursue uh, to uh, PhD. Um, so this is the advantage of it, because once you do MSc, you can probably spend about one and a half years to two years. Uh, then once you finish, uh, then you can go to PhD by research, um, and then you probably spend about another two and a half or three years. So, so in other words, uh, within five years, uh, you can actually earn an MSc and also a PhD. Uh, so this is an advantage of it. So that's why we, uh, we make this program academically rigor. The other thing is that uh, this program is actually also uh, emphasize more on cognitive and also research skills. Why so? Because we want this program to be designed in such a way that we are able to produce people who have you know, cognitive ability of understanding the issues and provide recommendations and also solutions. So the problems can be an industry problems, the problems can be a policy problems, the problem can be a, a, a research and empirical problem. So by doing this program, as you can see from the courses, we have mathematical method, we have financial econometry, we have advanced econometrics, we have financial modeling, we have risk management, and, and why we have all these courses, you know, because we want to prepare our students to able to deal with, you know, all these kind of questions that we are actually seeing. And, and a lot of people think that, oh, if I do this program, I'm just going to become a lecturer, you know, I'm just, just going to become a researcher. No, you can even work in industry because industry also require a lot of people who actually have cognitive ability and, you know, provide analysis, provide strategical solution and thinking towards solving some of the real base uh, industry problems. Um, so it can be customized at the company level or even at a much higher level, you know, at the policy institute level and even at the macro scale, you can actually design, uh, uh, you know, master plan for, the, for, for, for government and even for countries. So that's why we actually uh, designed this program. And, and the program requires you to do a number of core courses. As you can see, the core courses are divided into four components, finance, sharia, economics, and also uh, business plus strategy. Okay, so there are four elements um, that you study under the core courses. Um, so when you talk about business and strategy, you have strategy planning and also you have one consultancy project that what we call as action-based learning. So as you can see that the core courses build up your foundation in four big domains that we think which is really important um, towards creating a better graduates. And, and we are actually quite proud of our MSc program because 
at least from what I know is that the moment you get an MSc from INSEF, um, at least in Malaysia, any university will take you for your PhD program because they know the difficulty of this program and it's not easy to graduate with a title of MSc in Islamic Finance. So that is how rigor the program is. Okay, but it's worth it because the moment you go through a very rigorous program, what you will end up is that you will end up with substantive knowledge that you can use to build up your capacity within the industry regardless of you know, whether it's academia, research, or even, you know, in the corporate world. And when you go to the elective courses, as you can see, the elective courses are designed in the such a way that it allow you to pursue your interests. So you like finance, you can do portfolio management and financial modeling. If you like quantitative, you can go to financial econometrics and advanced econometrics. If you like banking, you can do risk management and wealth planning or even accounting. Uh, you know, if you like more policy, you can go to monetary and even international finance. Uh, so this is how the courses are actually being designed and allow you a certain flexibility of choosing what is best for you. Uh, the other interesting component of this particular program is that you allow to specialize as well. For this, At this point of time, we have two specialization. First one is capital market, where you have to do three out of four courses or you can even specialize in banking. Why? Because at this point of time, these are the two main domain of knowledge, you know, that um, big enough for people to specialize. Of course, in the future, we are thinking about takaful, we are thinking about regulation, we are thinking about specialization in Sharia, and so on and so forth. But for now, these are the two specializations that we have. So this is pretty much this is about our our MSc program. Again, I have to tell you that our MSc students are doing well. Um, and recently, one of our MSc graduate uh, completed her PhD from University of Queensland. Uh, she's Indonesian, um, and 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 as you can see, that you know the value of our MSc can bring you even to a top university in the world. Uh, so I'm looking forward to have you uh, in our MSc program. So with that, uh, I end my presentation. Um, uh, for this uh, MSc uh, se section. Thank you so much. Assalamu alaikum. The world never stands still. Neither does Islamic finance. It is up to us to upgrade ourselves to face new challenges or risk getting left behind. Everywhere we look, the digital edge is there. From the boardroom to the streets, it's more essential than ever to learn to adapt. To make sure our skills are always current and relevant. This new MBA program does that for everyone who applies, regardless of race and faith. Together, we can make a positive impact on the whole industry, creating practices that can be performed on a global scale. NCF champions the idea of learning and the importance of sustainable growth. Be at the forefront as a self-starter, a new type of leader. Enroll in our MBA program today. Learn from the experts in Islamic finance and conventional finance. Evolve to become a game changer and change the industry for the better. Through key areas, you'll learn not just about new topics, but about qualities that can change the world as well. We have always held the belief that there is a leader in every learner. So let's learn and take the first step to innovate. Accept new problems as challenges that can be solved with new solutions. Face everything, trends and uncertainties head on in order to become the leaders of the evolving future. Live chat with us at www.inceif.org. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and good day. I am Abdul Head Omar. Professor of Practice at NCF, and I look forward to seeing you in my sustainability management and investment class. See you then. So let's start the briefing. Um, this is our latest addition to NCF family, um, our brand new program, still hot from the oven. Um, so, um, first of all, before I speak about the MBA program, let me just quickly uh, recap why we wanted to do an MBA program. Um, the reason being is that um, Islamic finance has evolved over the years. 
Um, and not just we are just talking about having Sharia compliant products. We are not just talking about developing banking and capital market and takaful. And also the recent one people are talking about social finance. We actually now looking at emergence of bigger team, um, sustainability being one, you know, innovation being the being the second, you know, environmental conscious, um, inclusiveness, uh, you know, empowering societies, you know gender equality you know and and not forgetting about the growth of halal economy so so a lot of emergence of teams and also focus areas uh, are making uh, islamic finance become even more relevant uh, and it's not easy for us to embed all these things into our existing program so we thought is good idea is that to have something which is broad based and able to talk about all these issues within a program. And, and this is also will bring in a new clientele of students to us in, in the sense that, you know, people who actually have probably a broad-based view about these issues and, and they want to actually contribute further uh, without basically specializing in Islamic finance. So that's why we came up with this idea of MBA. And... And you look at the elements of MBA, you know, the core courses cover all the important elements. Um, we, we talk about leadership, we talk about human resource, we talk about finance, we talk about accounting, and, and we also speak about all these new areas that are coming up, entrepreneurship, uh, sustainability management, uh, we even have business strategy, uh, and not forgetting, we also have data analytics as well. And 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 student also will have the opportunity to go to uh, for a, a real uh, projects uh, by doing what we call as action based learning, and and so in other words, if you look at the core courses, all the important elements uh, of what is required for a student or for a candidate to have are actually covered in the core courses. Um, and the diversity of the courses will make your learning journey very exciting. So it's not that, you know, you're going to see a same domain again and again. So it's just like, okay, I study finance, next one I'm going to be doing human resource, and then I'm going to move on to marketing, and then I'm going to talk about sustainability, and then I will talk about business strategy and policy. So every term will actually bring up a new challenges for you. Okay. And, and the way that the classes are being taught are not just a typical way of teaching. You're going to do a lot of case study. You know, we're going to be talking about a lot of case review um, and, and, and real-based projects and so on and so forth. And in fact, some of these thick classes are being taught by, you know, industry players, by professor of practice. Uh, so gonna, they're going to bring in their, their years of experience in the corporate world um, and going to share it with you all. So there are a lot of things on the table uh, with this MBA program. So in fact, you give it give you a, a privilege of choosing, for example, uh, some of these elective courses. Uh, you can go into halal, for example. You can go into audit. You can go to social finance. Or in fact, you can still study more deeper about Islamic finance by taking courses like Islamic insurance, Islamic banking, and Islamic capital market. So, so in other words, what we are trying to do here is that we are trying to blend in uh, the new elements with the, the typical elements of Islamic finance. Uh, and by doing so, what we believe is that, you know, we can actually expand the reachability of Islamic finance industry, you know, and, and cover all this broader theme that we are actually talking about nowadays. So that is important for us. And, and so the MBA cohort will be a new form of agents or new form of ambassadors uh, who can actually engage at much broader scale of communications and also conversations uh, that makes Islamic finance even more relevant. Um, because this is, the, this is what we feel that required to build a better future, uh, not just you know, within an IF industry, but you know, beyond the IF industry. Uh, so it's a very exciting program. Um, even though it's uh, brand new, uh, but I, I, I personally feel that there's so much of potential that we can achieve together with this program. And, and not forgetting that the students also have the opportunity to do a project paper, which is supervised by some of our top-notch professors. 
you know, and and they can even do a, a case study, a consultancy paper, uh, or even a, a project based paper. Um, so this is all exciting. Um, so I kind of you know looking forward uh, for people to be engaging uh, with our staff and to know more about this program. Um, because you know, if you feel that you are uh, looking for new challenges in life, uh, looking to advance your knowledge in all this uh, emergence team that you know happening and 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 joining the conversation uh, at a much higher level, uh, and I think this is the program for you. Okay, so with that, I'm looking forward uh, to welcome you to our MBA program and to be some of the pioneers. Uh, who are going to become our uh, ambassador uh, uh, for INSEF. Thank you so much. Life is challenging. challenging. Today's choices determine tomorrow's achievements. To progress in your career, it's essential to upskill and stay relevant in today's rapidly changing world making it important to choose the right course of professional study from an accredited, globally recognized academic institution with a proven record of consistently molding learners into successful leaders. At NCF, we set the benchmark for excellence in Islamic finance. Founded by Bank Negara Malaysia, NCF is shaping the global landscape of Islamic finance by transforming learners into leaders. We are the first Islamic finance university in Malaysia to be AACSB accredited, ranking us in the top 5% of business schools globally. Our Satara 5 rating places us among the country's premier universities. NCF's new world-class executive masters in Islamic finance offers a supportive learning atmosphere with expert faculty comprising former CEOs and seasoned mentors who impart knowledge and advanced technical skills to shape you into a leader. Our program allows you to experience Islamic finance firsthand, demonstrating how banking, capital markets, zakat, sadaqah, wakaf, and takaful can be combined with technology to boost development in accordance with Makassid Sharia and UN Sustainable Development Goals. This is a flexible online program, allowing you to study at your own pace from anywhere in the world while collaborating with an international community of students. Today, NCF alumni are present in over 70 countries. It's time for a fresh start with NCF. Take charge of your life by taking the first step on your path to leadership. At NCF, we believe there's a leader in every learner. Secure your future today and learn more about our new world-class executive masters in Islamic finance. Call us at 03-7651-4000 or email us at marketing at ncf.org. Okay, so let me speak about um, our flagship program, um, MIP. Um, and then I'll speak about the online version of it, which is IMIF. And then we'll speak about the, 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 the sister of IMIF programs, or which is what we call as a PCIM program. Um, so, I mean, basically the, 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 the design and the idea uh, of all these programs are, are the same. Uh, why we have all these three programs uh, is, is, is quite simple uh, because we want to really produce talents for Islamic finance industry. And the way we define industry uh, from the beginning is that we talk about the growth of banking, capital market, takaful, and of course now uh, we are talking about the emergence of new industry that what we call as social finance. So as you can see, uh, these courses that are being designed to you, you know, accounting, risk management, economics, ICM, so all these courses are actually relevant courses for you to able to appreciate what is exactly going on in the industry. And, and in fact, this is how INSEF started. Okay, we really want to produce people who can actually uh, propel the industry to much higher level. And the fact that the Islamic finance industry is growing uh, at double digit for the last 15 years 
that shows that you know the 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 need for talents uh uh are becoming even more important okay um and not just normal talent uh but talent uh, even at the at the at the top level yes you can agree that you know you can learn islamic finance by attending short courses here and there but we are not really competing with all these short courses and short programs and everything our idea is basically to produce people to lead the industry you know to to uh, to equip themselves with all the relevant knowledge um and and to to take up a much higher positions uh, at least at the you know at the management level or even at the senior management level so that's how we actually we design this program and another interesting uh, about this program is that uh, and even emif as well the only difference between this one and emif is that maybe you can see some courses are slightly different um the structure may be slightly different but the the objective of these two programs are exactly the same one is of course face to face and the other one is actually uh, done online but the objective is is the same the objective is basically for people to be able to appreciate all the important domain banking capital market takaful social finance law uh, audit uh, because sharia audit becoming ever more important and also area like wealth planning and so on and so forth um and and interestingly the majority of the contents or bulk of the contents are driven from the industry by the industry so we extract for example the practices from the industry we write the modules uh, we give you exposure about the product um and some of these courses are actually being taught uh, by the uh, industry practitioner uh, we call them teaching fellows um and we also uh, bring some of them as a part timers so that you can actually hear and listen from them um so it's a mixture of uh, a combination of uh, you know fundamental knowledge and also applied knowledge but the emphasis is actually greater in applied knowledge as compared to fundamental knowledge um and the other difference between MIP and also EMIF is that for MIP you have what we call as action based learning Okay uh, what is action based learning you basically going to do a real based projects uh, and mainly related to IF industry okay um so okay so if you go to emif program the structure is slightly different where you only have to do six core courses um because emif is actually a more recent one so we were able to uh, restructure and make it even more concise um so you're going to do six core courses and then you can choose four elective uh, as you can see that the elective is up to you to specialize whether you want to go to banking capital market or takaf so our idea is that you know you study the base the fundamental which are the six courses uh, but then you choose whatever you want in term of that fits your interest okay uh, so some people like uh, capital market they will do capital market related courses some people who like banking they will do banking related courses and some people who like uh, takaful and wealth management they will do takaful and wealth management courses but before i move on to the last program which is pcrf i just want to highlight that for emif the we have a big component of project paper so what we are trying to achieve from this project paper is that we want the students to able uh, to contribute something tangible uh, to the industry so they should be able to you know solve a problem or uh, design a product for example or design a framework um and and so on and so forth and we made it in such a way that is quite flexible uh, because uh, you can even take some of the uh, projects that you are doing at, at your office um and then you can actually enhance it or expand it um uh, as long that you know we feel that that project will contribute to our understanding and more importantly to the development of islamic finance industry so the only again the only difference is that for emif uh, not the only different my apology uh, for emif we don't have uh, abl because it's an online program uh, but for mip we do have uh, uh, abl so that is the difference between the two okay and then if you allow me uh, the last one very quickly Uh, some students they do not want to do a flu bond masters uh, they just want to learn uh, you know specific domain of knowledge within emif and mip uh, so then they will say okay i just want to learn about banking so you will do pcif in banking where you only have to do three courses 
you can also choose Sharia, Capital Market, Takaful, or even Sharia Audit and Compliance. So the, the PCIF allows you to be more specialized, allows you to grasp you know, a, a, a domain of knowledge um, within uh, Islamic finance uh, uh, family, um, and you can actually complete PCIF within one semester. Okay. Uh, and, and the other beauty about PCIF is that once you do PCIF and, for example, you like PCIF, uh, then you can actually move on uh, and uh, continue uh, to EMIF or even to MIP program. So when you continue, you don't have to repeat these three courses uh, because you will get exemption from these three courses. You just have to do the remaining courses and then the project paper for you to get your master's degree. Uh, so this is a, like a bridging or what we call as a laddering program. Uh, so you, you you don't want to do full blown. You can start with this one first, and if you like it, you enjoy it. You feel that you can want to learn more, uh, then you can actually uh, go on uh, to our EMIF and also to MIP program. Uh, so with that, I just want to emphasize the fact that this program is almost entirely dedicated to the growth of IF industry. Uh, so for those who have ambitions and you know aspirations to be part of IF industry, which is growing you know uh, at double digit for for many many years right now and 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 malaysia uh is already uh, you know uh, reach a level of maturity but in many other countries is still at the infant stage so i i guess this is a very exciting program to be uh, to to be part with um and and you will learn a lot and 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 you and hopefully the knowledge that you will learn from this program uh, will make you uh, not just a better employee, uh, I, I would probably call it as a better talent, a high quality talent uh, and a valuable resources uh, for your company uh, or even you can uh, for your startups or, or any uh, you know endeavor that you decided to do after you know completing uh, either our PCIF or MIP or even EMIF. So with that, thank you so much. And if you need any further information, uh, you can probably get in touch with uh, some of our marketing staff uh, who are actually here uh, to support you uh, and to give you uh, clarity and, and, and more uh, detailed information about all the program that I've actually briefed you just now. So again, thank you so much. Uh, all the best. Assalamu alaikum. Thank you, Dr. Iskandar. So Dr. Iskandar had just gone through all of the programs um, that we have offering at INSEAD. Um, just to let you know, um, of course, Dr. Dr. Iskandar, besides working for INSEAD, he's also actually attached as a financial sector specialist consultant at the World Bank Group uh, here, right here in Kuala Lumpur. Um, and um, also just, just to um, uh, reiterate some of the things that may be uh, of concern for you right now, especially in the international um, um, applicants. Um, we understand um, the current situation where there's a lot of travel restriction from your end. Um, so therefore, um, a lot of these uh, programs that Dr. Eskandar had mentioned earlier, which are um, uh, the face-to-face -face program are right now being offered online, which means um, you'll be able to start the, the, the programs uh, by studying online at your own pace at your, uh, in your countries um, until um, when you are able to start traveling again and when you know the borders are open again then you'll be able to transfer um, uh, your 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 mode of learning into face to face where you can come to Malaysia and study now besides that um, I also wanted to let you know that um, because of the current situation with COVID um, what we've done at NCF um, or rather what I have personally done for all of the uh, prospects uh, prospective students is that we have actually waived the application fee which means your application fee is completely free. All you need to do is uh, complete the application, submit your uh, documents uh, and upload and everything, and then uh, click submit uh, in order for the application to be processed. And you'll be able to find out whether or not you've been, um, uh, you're eligible to enroll and um, um, uh, start the program before you even make all the other payments for, uh, you know, to, to start the courses. Um, this application fee is free only for now. Um, I think uh, we'll be able to carry it through all the way until the September intake. We have a June intake, which is still open right now. Um, if you are interested in the EMIF and the PCIF courses, which are fully online modules, 
uh, as an international applicant to be able to um, to enroll that for this upcoming uh, June semester. Uh, but if you are not um, uh, looking at the uh, online uh, mode of learning, uh, for example, if you're interested in the PhD or the uh, Master's in Science or the Master's in Islamic Finance Practice, which are the face-to-face -face mode, those are available for you um, in September. Um, and the application uh, deadline is still open, so you'll be able to still um, submit your application again for free. Um, up next is actually um, another speaker, um, a colleague of ours, um, who's uh, actually uh, responsible for the um, administration um, uh, and support of all of our students. Um, her name is Ms. Lisa, and she will be talking about one of the very important parts of um, uh, pursuing uh, postgrad studies, which is financial assistance. So um, stick around. And before we go to um, uh, uh, Ms. Nisa, uh, I just need a small favor from each and every one of you to just give a rating of what you think of what Dr. Iskandar had mentioned earlier in terms of his information, whether or not it's good or it's not good. So if it's good and if it's informative enough for you, just type five and put it into the chat box. If it's not, if it's uh, if it's lower than that, it's five, four, three, or two, or one is the lowest. So please do that um, into the chat box. And um, I will bring you through now uh, with Ms. Kairunisa to speak about the financial aid um, and stick around. Thank you very much. All right, thank you, Effie. Uh, Assalamualaikum and a uh, very good day, everyone. Um, thank you very much for joining this session. Uh, let, first, let me introduce myself. Uh, my name is uh, Nisa. Um, or in full, it's Khairi Nisa Khairuddin, but you can just call me Nisa. I'm the Director for Registry and Student Services. Uh, so today I'm going to talk about um, what we have at INSEAF uh, when it comes to scholarship and financial aid. So I'm sure uh, as a university and other universities as well, um, we are normally will be offering uh, some kind of scholarships and financial aid. Um, so um, at INSEAF, uh, we strive to do the same. Uh, it's just that our men, our 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 role in providing the scholarship is basically uh, to accelerate um, our graduates uh, so that you are able to go out there and contribute to the um, the growth of Islamic finance, not just in Malaysia, but also in uh, all over the world, inshallah. Now, let, let me just uh, start with my presentation today. So basically, there's two parts of the presentation. One is in self scholarships and the other one is um, financial aid. Uh, so I'm going to go through the scholarship first. Um, we have two types of scholarships at INSEAF. Um, uh, the first one is um, uh, is offered to a PhD level. Uh, the second one is offered to um, our master's program. So let me go through the first one first, um, of which we call INSEAF Chancellor's um, Scholarship. Now, uh, INSEAF Chancellor's Scholarship <coughs> is actually... Um, the most prestigious um, scholarship that we have um, at INSEAF, the, the, uh, the, uh, the one that we offer uh, so far. Uh, the reason why we say it's prestigious because the coverage um, not only that covers the tuition fees, but also covers the monthly stipend for three years. So let me just go through. Um, of course, uh, the scholarship um, uh, is offered uh, to a high-performing master's uh, graduate who have a strong desire to pursue a PhD program at INSEAF. So when you want to apply uh, for a Chancellor Scholarship, you must first have um, uh, fulfilled the criteria to be um, uh, enrolled in a PhD program. So of course, what we are looking for is, um, you know, uh, someone who is able to complete the program within the stipulated time. Uh, and also uh, able to uh, contribute back uh, to the industry and also to society. Um, I have to also forewarn you guys that um, the Chancellor Scholarship uh, is very, very competitive. It's highly competitive uh, because of the nature of the coverage um, and uh, we only offer um, less than five seats in a year. 
So um, PhD uh, for PhD program, we offer uh, intake in January every year in every January semester and every September semester. Of course, we open um, a scholarship application for both um, intakes as well. Uh, but um, it is highly competitive. Uh, although we do um, provide some, um, what you call it, uh, seats for each intake. But um, for us, um, the seats must be given to those who really, really deserve it. Yeah. Okay, the criteria. Um, let's see. The criteria, uh, of course, we are looking for uh, outstanding academic merit and, and publication. So meaning that at the point of you uh, applying for PhD, uh, we we will look at of uh, we we will look at your um, academic credential, uh, but we also will look at your uh, research research exposures. Meaning that um, have you had any research exposures um, before? Have you written any art articles before? Have you published any uh, you know any uh, any writings before? Have you co-write anything before? So all those is really important for us to make a decision uh, on this matter. Normally, when you apply, all this information should be embedded in your CV. Yeah. So the second one is has been offered an admission to INSEAD PhD program as full time mode of study. So that's the second one. The third one is currently not receiving any form of financial aid or or other scholarships. Um, reason being, uh, we don't want more than one party to be paying for your tuition fees. That's all, uh, because it will be uh, uh, complicated. Uh, the next one is uh, the potential to complete the program within the stipulated time timeline. So uh, this is also important uh, because the scholarship agreement, um, uh, uh, the duration of the scholarship agreement is uh, is about three years. So we must, uh, we you have to demonstrate uh, to us that you are able to complete the program within the uh, mentioned um, uh, period of time. Uh, and uh, lastly, is the candidate must be able to work as a graduate academy assistant. Now, this is the beautiful part of um, this scholarship. Not only that, this scholarship is um, able to provide you with the monetary um, aspects, which is uh, paying for your tuition fees and also the monthly stipend. But also, uh, we are hoping that um, the scholarship is able to kick off your academic credentials. Uh, what I meant by cre academic credentials is that um, uh, normally, um, uh, you know, uh, if you are uh, engaged with us as graduate academic assistants, you will be attached to um, a professor, for example. So uh, if you are uh, if you are assisting the professors, sometimes you are exposed to what the professors are working on. So if, if the professor is working on uh, uh, any specific research project, you will automatically be involved in that project as well. So in a way, um, building up your academic credentials so that by the time you have graduated from your, from your PhD, you have also acquired certain exposure um, uh, on, you know, doing uh, uh, research projects, for example, uh, exposures in uh, uh, academic writings, uh, for example, uh, probably will be able to publish uh, a number of, uh, you know, writings in journals, uh, reputable journals and all that. So uh, this is one of the, um, or what you call it, key uh, in uh, securing this scholarship. Now, uh, the scholarship coverage, as I mentioned earlier, it will cover your tuition fees uh, and also the monthly stipend of 2,500 ringgit for three years. Uh, and the duration of the scholarship will be uh, for the, hang on, it's... Okay, the duration of the scholarship will be the, for the full course of study as stipulated in the offer of admission, subject to INSEAD's terms and condition. Okay, now let's move on. Uh, the next, right, the next uh, scholarship or the second type of scholarship that we have uh, is called INSEAD President's Scholarship. Now, INSEAD President's Scholarship is a, a pretty much like a tuition fee waiver award uh, and it is offered to outstanding candidates who wishes to pursue master's program at INSEAF. Now, we have three master's program at INSEAF. We have MSc in Islamic Finance, we have Master's in Islamic Finance Practice, MIFP, and we have MBA in Sustainable Business. Uh, 
So if you are uh, enrolling into either one of these three programs, you are um, eligible to apply for the President's Scholarship. Uh, the criteria that we are looking for, uh, of course, outstanding academic achievement with minimum CGPA of 3.0 in bachelor's degree in any related field. Uh, has been offered, second one is has been offered an admission to INSEAD Master's program as face-to-face -face mode of study uh, and also full-time. Uh, the third one is currently not receiving any form of financial aid or any scholarship. As I mentioned earlier, uh, we don't want more than one parties to be paying for your tuition fees. The fourth one is uh, must not exceed 40 years of age on the age of application. Now, uh, in terms of scholarship coverage, uh, it will cover your full tuition fees uh, throughout the whole program. Uh, the duration, uh, the duration of the scholarship will be for the full course of study as stipulated in the offer of admission, subject to INSEAF's terms and condition. So the terms and condition, if I may share here, uh, is that uh, once uh, you are holding this scholarship, um, you have to maintain uh, a specific uh, minimum um, academic uh, result. For example, if you are MSc in Islamic Finance, um, you have to maintain your, res your, your result. You have to maintain CGPA 3.3 and above at all times. Yeah, so uh, your, your, your scholarship um, status will depend on this. But I'm sure if you are selected for this scholarship, um, you should be able to you know at least maintain the minimum results um, um, uh, effortlessly inshallah now how to apply um, this is really important um, we don't take any separate application so there is no separate uh, separate application is uh, is needed so what you have to do is uh, when you log on to uh, INSEAF online application form uh, the one that you uh, key in when you wanted to apply for the uh, for the for the course or for the program, uh, you can see under financial particulars. Uh, this is under section two, under section financial particulars here. Uh, you ha you have to choose a scholarship because it will ask here your funding methods. So the funding methods here would be either uh, self funding if you are paying on your own either sponsorship if you are being sponsored by uh, anybody or corporate bodies or scholarship uh, if you are applying for scholarship. So in this case, if you are applying for scholarship, you have to choose scholarship. So uh, and uh, under select scholarship, you can um, you can choose here applying for scholarship. In the case where you have secured um, uh, an external scholarship, for example, uh, then you you can do the first two steps. Uh, first two steps, but the third step here you mentioned here secure scholarship. So at least we know that you have you have already secured the scholarship. So in this case, if you're applying for either um, uh, the chancellor scholarship or the president scholarship, then you choose applying for scholarship. So this is the indicator that you are applying for scholarship. Then once you submit the whole uh, online application form then my, uh, our team will be able to see that you are applying for the scholarship and we will process accordingly. So I hope this is clear. Okay, next one. Okay, this is the second part, uh, uh, which we call NCF bursary. So NCF bursary um, is more like a financial aid uh, that we give on a semester basis. Now, um, um, everybody at NCF can apply for uh, NCF bursary. Uh, it's open to all students uh, for our uh, master's and PhD students. Uh, however, uh, it is open only to current continuing students. So what it meant is um, um, if you are a new student, uh, your first semester, you have to pay on your own first. Okay. Um, when you you are only eligible to apply for this financial aid only from your second semester onwards. So when you apply or during your second semester, you, uh, uh, part of the decision uh, whether to uh, award you the financial assistance uh, will be your result during your first semester. Okay, so I hope this is clear. The reason why we do that is because we want to make sure that those who are applying for the scheme are those who are 
really committed to the studies. Um, this is probably uh, due to our past experience when we uh, give out you know, a number of uh, financial uh, aid uh, to, uh, during the first semester and some of them are not able to cope even during the first semester and they left. So um, we are hoping that um, the fund that we have will only be disbursed to those who really need it, uh, to those who really uh, will be able to, to use it uh, um, accordingly instead of, you know, going it uh, to waste. So inshallah, once, uh, alhamdulillah, once we have reviewed um, the terms accordingly, uh, then uh, we we are seeing more and more students are committed to this program uh, and uh, we are happy to see. Now, um, the criteria, as I mentioned, uh, all students are, are eligible to apply. Uh, it is open to current continuing students. Uh, if you are an MIFP student, uh, you have to pass all papers in the previous semester. Okay, so if you fill any papers, you are not eligible to apply for uh, the scheme, meaning that you have to strive again uh, uh, the, the that particular uh, semester to pay on your own until you have passed all papers. Then only then uh, you are able you are eligible to apply. So don't worry, uh, even if you fill one paper this semester, uh, you can try again. So uh, and this uh, financial uh, financial assistance does doesn't uh, uh, doesn't necessarily be offered to those um, new uh, 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 first uh, year students. No, uh, even uh, you know there are a lot of circumstances that uh, you know um, sometimes uh, some people who started studies they have you know some savings uh, put aside uh, for the program, but. Uh, life happens for example so towards the end of the program uh, you are not uh, you know, this person might not be able to um, you know uh, fund uh, his or her studies because uh, the fund that is already allocated for the program has already been used you know elsewhere uh, maybe emergency whatever not so um, you know you can again as long as you uh, fulfill the criteria here you can um, apply for the scheme inshallah now for that's for MIFP for EMIF uh, is the same with MIFP. Uh, your yeah, students must pass MIFP pa uh, sorry EMIF papers in the last semester. Sorry for the typo there. Uh, for MSc, uh, you are required to achieve a minimum CGP of three point three in the previous semester. So that's for MSc. Uh, the same uh, requirement goes for MBA, where you are required to achieve a minimum CGPA of three point three in in previous semester. For PhD, uh, you are required to achieve a minimum CGPA of 3.5 in previous semester. So I hope this is clear for MIFP and EMIF, no failures. MSc and MBA, minimum CGPA of 3.3. And for PhD, minimum CGPA of 3.5. Okay. For scholarship coverage, um, uh, normally in one semester, we will give a minimum of two papers. However, this decision uh, it depends on uh, uh, depends on how much you have in the fund. So, uh, if I can share with you, the fund uh, that we have uh, is a normally uh, is a contribution from uh, co corporate bodies and individuals. So, it can be uh, it can be depleted at any point of time. So uh, what we have, uh, what what happened in the past is that when the um, the amount in the fund, uh, when we have more fund in the fund, uh, we are able to provide uh, more coverage for students. Uh, there are uh, instances in the past where uh, we have uh, quite a number of fund, uh, we have a, a substantial amount in the fund. Uh, we are able to provide more than two papers for those who apply for that particular semester. Uh, but there are also instances whereby um, we uh, we have um, uh, not much uh, amount in the fund. So uh, in order to make sure that uh, all students who apply uh, are able to enjoy the uh, financial assistance, uh, we have to um, what you call it, uh, reduce the amount that everyone is receiving. Um, for that particular semester. So again, the scholarship coverage is not um, uh, set in stone here. It depends on the amount that we have in the fund. 
Okay. Uh, now, how to apply for the fund? Uh, you can uh, complete the INSEAD bursary online application form. Uh, this is accessible via your university portal, your student portal. Uh, normally, when uh, the when we have opened the application, the uh, your, you you will you will see announcement uh, done by registry and student services in the announcement uh, announcement section in the student portal. So, uh, of course, uh, the form needs to be attested by the Commissioner for Oath or Notary Public. However, we are waiving uh, this requirement for now uh, because uh, we know that uh, uh, during COVID, it's difficult to find a Commissioner for Oath, um, not just in Malaysia, but all over the world. So, for now, we are waiving this requirement. Uh, we might be um, uh, bringing back the requirement uh, when... Um, Things are better, inshallah. But for now, you can apply without the uh, this requirement. Uh, application is on semester basis. So, uh, uh, as you are aware, uh, we have three semesters in a year. We have June semester, so we have January semester, we have June semester, and we have September semester. You can apply every semester, and application will be on semester basis, meaning that. Uh, let's say, for example, in January semester, you uh, you are awarded this financial assistance uh, and you use it for uh, the fees for January semester. For um, for June semester, you have to reapply. You So you must reapply every semester because during the reapplication, we will assess back your results in the previous semester. So that should be done on the semester basis. Okay, and then uh, the next one is deadline uh, usually will be announced in the student portal before the semester starts. So this is what I meant by you have to really check out the announcement section in the student portal. Uh, this is for new application and also for reapplication. And I would like to reiterate that you have to reapply every semester. So if you do reapply for the next semester, we take it that you are not interested to uh, receive the fund yeah so that's why uh, if you're interested to uh, still receive the fund you have to reapply every semester okay uh, I th this is it um, um, that's the end of my session today uh, thank you very much for um, uh, for going through um, the whole uh, presentation today. I hope uh, my information is uh, uh, clear. Uh, you can, uh, if you have any inquiries, you can leave your inquiries uh, um, um, with the um, organizer. Inshallah, we'll, uh, we'll come back to you with the um, uh, answer as soon as possible, Inshallah. With that, uh, we wish you all the best. Uh, we hope to uh, welcome you uh, on campus um, as one of our students. Uh, and uh, until then, uh, take care, uh, stay safe, and uh, we'll meet again, inshallah. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. I hope um, I see a lot of you have questions and I hope the questions are being answered um, right now. So what uh, Ms. Nisa had shared are actually a lot of opportunities for um, scholarships as well as financial aid at INSEAD. But like I mentioned earlier, um, the first step uh, into applying for any of this financial aid and um, um, scholarship is actually to complete your application first. So if you have not done yet, um, with all that um, processes, please do so very, very quickly. If you are looking at September intake, I think this is the right time for you to uh, submit an application. I know despite the current situation with the pandemic, a lot of people are, are very um, uh, careful about spending and careful about investing money. But um, I do believe that I think um, uh, as what we've learned in the history, every and every um, uh, every uh, history has had taught us that every pandemic uh, comes with recovery, and during the recovery period, a lot of people who have all this extra age in terms of you know um, the things that they've learned and they've upskilled uh, during the crisis uh, comes up as a value for them to get into you know uh, the workforce, inshallah. 
So I think um, um, it is also quite a good time to um, invest in ourselves um, as well as to um, equip ourselves with all the uh, the needs of uh, the future, inshallah. Uh, now, so the next person that we have as a speaker today is actually to speak on um, some of the concerns that have been uh, outlined by some of the conversations that we have experienced with some, some of you before in, in terms of um, uh, learning at NCF uh, in times of COVID where uh, materials, uh, resources uh, are concerned, whereby you're worried about, you know, the books, the text, um, the resources, the reference uh, materials that you have uh, or that you need for your studies. Um, so uh, the next person is Ms. Azlina. She is the manager at our Knowledge Management Centre. Um, it's actually more than a library with, uh, if you have the chance, uh, inshallah, in future to come to INSEAF and actually see the KMCF at INSEAF. Um, uh, the, the Knowledge Management Centre uh, houses a whole lot of uh, publications and uh, reference materials for all of your studies, uh, studying needs. Um, so um, Ms. Azlina will uh, share that with you in a moment. But before we go, um, in the chat box, please read uh, Ms. Kairunisa's um, presentation earlier, whether or not it has given you enough information in terms of how do you go about with um, applying for your financial aid as well as for your uh, scholarships at NCF. Now, I do have a little bit of a tip that I wanted to share with everyone here today, uh, since, since that everybody is very uh, highly spirited and very active on the chat board. We have been approved, uh, Alhamdulillah, which is a piece of good news. We have been approved with also another track of um, uh, scholarship, which is called the NCF scholarship. It may be a partial scholarship, but it also still gives um, a whole lot of our uh, uh, potential students some form of financial aid, especially during the time of needs like right now. Um, we understand that um, you still want to pursue your studies and uh, we hold strong values um, of actually creating um, uh, um, very uh, uh, talented uh, human capital for the Islamic finance industry. So that is part of our mandate. It is still our job, our value to, uh, to serve you and give you uh, the best, not just on the studies, but also uh, in terms of your uh, financial support. So please do, um, like I said, do complete your application and look up for all of this news uh, from our um, from our sales counselors and our marketing team. Um, if you have not yet followed us on Instagram, on Facebook, please do so. It's in CF, uh, I N C E I F underscore edu. Um, also, um, a couple of good news that is going to come soon is um, some new prospects of a new campus for all of us next year uh, in 2022 for NCF. Uh, and, and some, some other news I will share later after the session with uh, Ms. Noor Azlin, uh, Azlina. So uh, stay tuned. Ms. Noor Azlina is coming up next with KMC. Thank you. Okay, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh uh, and thank you, Effie. Hi, uh, my name is Noor Azlina Binti Zorola. I'm the manager of INSEF Knowledge Management Center. So today I'm going to give you guys a, a review about uh, what KMC uh, provide for our students, uh, how we assist you with um, all your learning uh, and research activities as well as how you can get to know what are the resources that we um, provide uh, for you uh, to assist you throughout your uh, studies. So today uh, I will cover uh, the what KMC does, uh, the resources that we provide, the services that we offer for you as students of INSEF, the facilities uh, that we offer, our opening hours, the borrowing privilege that you get, how you can connect with uh, INSEF uh, uh, KMC team, and also the INSEF student email. Okay, basically what we do at INSEF KMC is that uh, we facilitate and strengthen the creation, the flow, 
sustainment and growth of Islamic finance knowledge at INSEF. It means that we capture and we collate all the resources or materials but written by our faculty members, the learning uh, resources uh, that we can help students, especially uh, the thesis by our past PhD graduates and also the past examination papers that you can refer to throughout your study period. Besides that, we also improve discovery and access to Islamic finance knowledge through the platforms that we have uh, as well as the portals. And we enhance the students' learning experience at INSEF uh, while uh, you are using the services and facilities that we have. The resources that INSEF MC provide, uh, here I uh, broke it into book and ebook. The book that we have, uh, we uh, separated or we categorize it according to general collection, reference collection, and special collection. The general collection are those that you can borrow and refer to uh, uh, check out uh, for you to use uh, as reference material to do your assignments or uh, research. Reference collection are those that you can only use and refer to in-house, meaning that it cannot, it cannot be checked out uh, and be used outside from uh, uh, in Circuit MC premise and also we have special collection which are categorized as uh, red spot and thesis material. These are uh, materials that you can borrow for a limited number of hours. For the time being, we only allow uh, special collection to be used for uh, four hours. Besides that, we also have e-books uh, which uh, are categorized uh, according to subject areas such as uh, Islamic finance, Islamic capital market, um, Islamic banking, business, as well as leadership uh, subjects. And we have it in different platforms uh, whereby you can find ebooks in our Wiley online library from ProQuest ebook central, ebooks by uh, EBSCOhost, Science Direct, Taylor and Francis, as well as GPRL. These ebooks uh, can be referred and used not only within KMC premise, the physical premise, but uh, you are also able to use it and refer to it uh, while uh, you are studying or learning anywhere uh, out of the campus. So as I said, we also provide uh, financial databases such as uh, Data Stream, Thomson Reuters Data Stream. From Reuters Icon and Pitch Connect. These databases also you can use it out of the campus through the login, uh, single sign on login. And uh, we have scholarly databases uh, in the platforms such as uh, Emerald, Science Direct, and EBSCO Host. Uh, apart from that, uh, additional uh, resources that you, resource that you can use for you to uh, during your study period is for you to access. Uh, our INSEF Knowledge Repository, or we call it IKR. This is the platform where we archive the um, intellectual contributions or works or journal articles written by our faculty members, as well as you can find um, past examination papers, uh, theses by our past PhD uh, graduates in uh, our IKR. The services that we provide, uh, we have 24-7 uh, access to all our um, platforms, uh, whereby even though you, you are not physically here at INSEF KMC, but uh, anywhere around the world, you can have um, free access to the resources. Uh, you just, what, what you require is just to log in using your student ID and the password given. Um, besides that, we also provide information such assistance. Uh, if let's say you are looking for a specific article and you couldn't find the full text uh, of that particular article, you may send to us the full citation of that article, uh, which means that you have to give us the name of the author, the title, the uh, journal in which it is being published, as well as the uh, volume number, um, uh, and we will try to source it out for you and we will email the soft copy of the article to you once it is ready. Uh, we also have KMC Customer Service Hub. This is uh, um, uh, whereby you can interact with us uh, physically when you are here at INSEF uh, KMC Premise. Uh, 
students are also allowed to borrow, return and renew uh, physical books and also um, e-books. We also provide workshop and training sessions for you to familiarize with all the platforms and also the resources that we offer. The workshop and training sessions are done um, uh, quite frequently and we usually will um, promote it uh, or announce to our students through your e-university or sometimes we do it in our um, uh, Facebook page. We have also a document solution whereby if you are um, students uh, who are coming to NCF KMC as a face-to-face -face student, for example, and you need to submit your assignment, we have a document solution where you can request us to do a binding, scanning and laminating for your assignments. Um, and uh, apart from that, we also provide document delivery and also interlibrary loan, um, meaning that to, meaning to say that if you go to um, other university library uh, in Malaysia and you find that um, there are titles or books that you want to borrow from that particular university, you can request for interlibrary loan, but it is um, uh, the request must come uh, to INSEF KMC. You have to give us the title, the author, the publication of the uh, book, and we will get it uh, through interlibrary loan from that particular university library. Once the book is ready, we will inform you through email and uh, you can come and collect it, collect it at um, INSEF KMC. But uh, for now, just would like to inform you that the um, interlibrary loan or the common delivery service we provide uh, only um, between INSEF KMC and three um, public universities in Malaysia, uh, namely uh, International Islamic University, University Kebangsaan Malaysia, and also UITM. But due to COVID at the time, uh, for, during COVID, um, the, this uh, interlibrary loan service, we need to halt it temporarily and we will announce it to the students once it is uh, uh, back again. Uh, the facilities that are available in our physical premise are self-check kiosk and book drop machine. This is for you to do self-service um, borrowing and returning of books. Uh, we also have study area whereby students can study. Um, uh, this is like a, a quiet uh, space, quiet reading space or study space for you in the uh, physical KMC. Uh, we, we would recommend you not to do any discussion at this study area because um, most of the students prefer to study here at this uh, study, um, quiet study area because they need to have a more focus uh, when they study or do their research. Uh, we uh, provide discussion lounge. So if you need to do some discussion or you need to pick up some phone calls, uh, you can do so at the discussion lounge. Uh, we have database room uh, for our um, financial databases platforms. But as I mentioned to you just now, even though you are not in our physical premise, you can access to our Thomson Reuters uh, icon uh, data stream of pitch connect through online um, uh, remote uh, access. Uh, we have also workstations uh, for PC terminals that are connected to the uh, printer. So if you need to print out something from the workstations, it is linked to the printer and you can do so um, uh, and print it. Um, uh, it will, you will have to use the um, the card that we provide and the, the value will be deducted based on the number of pages that you print or copy. Uh, Wi-Fi is available on campus, uh, including KMC. So there's no problem to connect to, uh, to internet and do your research. Our opening hours for now, we are open on Monday to Friday from 8.30 a.m. to 8 p.m. And we are closed on Saturday, Sunday and public holiday. But we have online support or a system provided to you. Uh, it's just that you have to email it to INSEF KMC, uh, to, to our team uh, using the email address kmc at insef.org. If you have any inquiries, for example, feel free to uh, send your email to us at kmc at insef.org. But um, uh, 
um, please take note that our service level uh, is that we will reply to you within three working days. It's, just, it's usually um, before the three working days is up, we will always have uh, the answers ready and reply to you. But just uh, to give some, to have some flexibility, our SLE is for three working days to respond to any email inquiries. Uh, the opening hours here, uh, any changes to our opening hours, we will inform it to uh, the students through your university, through our KMC portal and also other identified um, platforms such as through our um, Facebook page. Borrowing privilege for face-to-face -face students, um, you are allowed to borrow general collection uh, for 30 days. Uh, and also for special collection, uh, i.e. red spot, our red spot collection for four hours. The number, the maximum number of items that you can borrow at once is um, 20 maximum. But uh, in terms of ebooks, um, online students can also borrow, read, refer to check out the uh, ebooks uh, through the platforms that I mentioned earlier. The borrowing privilege varies, which means that the each uh, platform has its own um, criteria or um, uh, number of um, days that they allow students or users to borrow the book. Some platforms provide uh, borrowing for up to seven days uh, for two or three titles at once. Uh, some allow for uh, five days uh, for only one title, for example. So it varies between one platform to another. But feel free to access or uh, to, to refer to the ebook platform that I've mentioned earlier so that it will be helpful for you throughout the study period. For those who borrow our general collection um, materials, you can uh, do the renewal of the books that you are borrowing um, through our KMC portal. You just have to log in to your KMC portal account and then you can do the renewal provided that it is done on or before the due date. And the book, the particular book that you are borrowing is not um, on reserve or on whole list by our other students. And um, provided that uh, you have not um, renewed the book twice. Next is on the um, overdue fines that is imposed uh, for any late returning of books. For every general collection, um, late returning is one ringgit per day per item, while for special collection or the red spot collection, it is five ringgit per hour per item. Why is it important that students return the book um, or the materials before uh, or on the due date uh, one is, of course, to avoid um, accumulating overdue fines, but the other important reasons are because the resources that we have are limited. So we would like to give um, equal access to all students, uh, not just um, uh, to our physical student, face-to-face uh, -face students, um, but also sometimes we have online students who come here and would like to refer to our physical books, even though they uh, they can't um, borrow it, but at least there are mechanisms for them to browse through the titles and uh, maybe take some notes or make a reference, uh, make a photocopy of selected pages. So it's important that um, you return the book um, that you are borrowing uh, before or on the due date. Uh, is uh, another reason is that we want to give you opportunity to also look at other um, options or titles that are available that within the same subject area and not just limiting to the uh, books or references that are listed in your uh, course outline by your uh, instructor or faculty member. So uh, next is how you can connect with us. Um, we have our InSafe Knowledge Portal. Uh, this is like a gateway, the InSafe Knowledge Portal acts like gateway. It links you to these um, platforms that you can see for window, uh, four tabs here. We link you through InSafe Knowledge Portal to our KMC portal, whereby you can search for books, only physical books or ebook contents from um, KMC portal. 
we also provide you the uh, it also acts as a gateway to allow you to access our ITR in self knowledge repository and also to link to our Facebook page and also to in self thought leadership blog. So basically, this is like a one stop um, um, page that you can access um, various uh, resources or platforms that we offer for you. Um, and hopefully, it will make it easy for you to navigate. Uh, these are among the subjects or um, um, materials being categorized into um, uh, these uh, areas uh, whereby we call it uh, INSEF Islamic Finance Taxonomy. You can find um, um, uh, IC's uh, intellectual contributions in ITR, for example, in um, subjects like Islamic microfinance, Islamic finance, Takafu, Islamic accounting, Islamic banking, and etc. So feel free to explore this and more other subject areas in our um, uh, INSEF Knowledge Repository or ITR. The student email um, uh, is important, uh, not just for you to check uh, any announcement posed by the universities, but also all notices or reminders from KMC will be sent to your INSEF student email. Meaning that if you are a um, face-to-face student and you are borrowing our physical books, the um, notices or reminders for you to return or um, uh, to return the books that you are borrowing will be sent to your INSEF student email. So uh, how you can access it is by um, uh, through mail.insef.org using your student ID, um, your student number uh, as the student ID at, uh, at student.insef.org, that's the email uh, that you're going to use. And the password is the same with your university account. So any issue you know, that you have in uh, logging into the uh, student email, please um, contact uh, help desk and they will be able to assist you. Finally, this is the KMC team. If you need assistance, uh, we are here to uh, assist you not just face-to-face, uh, -face, but also through online assistance that we provide. Uh, if you want to give us a call, the phone number is um, uh, 0376514070. This is the number to our KMC customer service hub. If you want to email us, the email address is kmc at insight.org. You can ask us um, to assist you with, uh, for example, to how to get uh, materials or reading materials through inside knowledge portal or if you wanna if you want more information about how to access our um, financial database then you can um, uh, ask uh, to set an appointment and uh, we will assist you accordingly to guide you in using the financial databases so uh, basically that's um, all from INSEF uh, Knowledge Management Center. Um, I'm, uh, I welcome you to uh, INSEF, uh, be part of our family. And uh, I hope to see you all on campus and we, uh, we are um, hoping to be able to assist you more and we want to see you um, around and um, uh, be able to help you throughout your uh, learning and uh, research uh, throughout the study period. So, Effie, uh, back to you. Thank you very much, everyone, for still um, keeping in touch with us and still uh, on this session. I know it's been a long one, but I think we've covered a lot today. Um, number one, I think you've heard from uh, our president and CEO about NCF and how we've been operating for the last 15 years and how we are operating throughout the pandemic time. And then you've heard from uh, Dr. Eskanda, the uh, Associate Dean at uh, the School of Graduate Studies as well as Professional Studies. Um, and then you had uh, Ms. Kairu Nisa, who had uh, shared a lot about how you can go about with um, applying for scholarship as well as financial aid uh, during your application. And last but not least, it was just now, uh, just uh, just minutes ago, uh, Ms. Alina sharing about what kind of resources you'll be getting from uh, 
uh, in CF uh, KMC uh, during your um, your journey of studying uh, at NCF. Um, and that is really it. Um, we've uh, come almost to the end of the session. In fact, um, we are already at the end of the session. And um, all I need you to do again is just to help me give a rating to uh, Ms. Azlina. Um, this is for us to also um, improve our delivery of our open day, virtual open day. As you've uh, seen it, you probably uh, saw our advertisement on uh, a digital medium, uh, either a social media or um, our Facebook advertisements or Instagram advertisements or LinkedIn advertisements. That's how you came across us. And um, since it is the time of um, a challenging pandemic right now out there, we are not allowed to do any marketing. And this is the only way we can reach out to um, all of our applicants. And I hope that we can continue to improve ourselves as well. So um, before I go, uh, my short parting note to all of you, I know, uh, again, just to uh, share uh, the same sentiments, furthering your education, especially in postgraduates, uh, may not be easy, especially during this time of uh, challenging uh, COVID and, and, and all that, um, and with all, all the borders closed. But with the right mindset, uh, motivation and support system, I think, uh, inshallah, we, we can all do it. Uh, because I do believe that um, uh, you need to um, have the right uh, mindset to do this, uh, your commitment. Um, so inshallah, believe in yourself and your ability to learn and you will succeed. Um, and in, in doing uh, courses online, I do believe that it takes a lot of discipline. Um, Self-studying is tough, but you're not alone. So um, our online student counselors are still here with you. Um, they will be here with you until 5 p.m. Um, uh, Ms. Uh, Ifa, Ms. Nushakirin, uh, Mr. Yusri are all here to help you with any of your inquiries. I'm so happy to see that the chat box are really, really active today. Um, so um, just continue to talk to them. Um, I will leave this Zoom session until 5 p.m. if you have any further questions um, through my colleagues. So um, just one other thing that I want to um, leave you with, our June intake for um, all programs for our local participants, local uh, applicants. If you are a Malaysian, you can still apply for our June intake, uh, which means uh, our executive master's in Islamic finance, our professional certificate in Islamic finance, our master's in Islamic finance practice, as well as our MSc uh, in Islamic finance are still open for local Malaysian. So you can still submit your application, um, complete and submit now and then try for all of those um, financial aids that we've mentioned earlier. Um, but for those of you who are from the international, I think there's a lot of majority are from international applications applicants. You can still apply for EMIF and PCIF in June. That is still open for you. Um, but the rest of the programs are already closed for the face-to-face -face one because the processing for international application takes a bit more time. So you can try for our September intake, which is still open for all courses for international, including PhD and MBA. So please do, do so. Um, and uh, to end this call, I want to thank all of you uh, for uh, staying through. And also to my colleagues, thank you so much for uh, making this happen. Um, it's, it's been a great pleasure to be with, with everyone. So please stay safe and have a good weekend ahead. Um, and since it's still um, within the month of Shawwal, so Eid Mubarak to all of you who are celebrating. I hope you all have a have a good time um, and um, have a good weekend coming coming soon. Thank you and take care. Salam alaikum. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. Thank you.
The MLMS is the online platform for teaching and learning at INSEF. You can access the MLMS via Powered by Moodle, this MLMS is a collaborative media, meant not only as a virtual classroom, but also a place for you to collaborate and share with your lecturers and fellow classmates. To log in, type your username and password here. Here, you can see the latest
learn from one another. Some courses may have quizzes to help identify your level of understanding. The quizzes may range from multiple choice questions to open-ended short answers. The quizzes provide immediate feedback and some lecturers may even leave their input on your answer. Depending on how your lecturer sets up their course, they may require you to go through some reading material and then answer a quiz before attending webinars. This is to help you prepare for the webinar as well as identify areas where you may need more help with. Now on to the webinars. Designed to be a two-way and interactive learning session, webinars are where your lecturers will share their expertise with you. Use this opportunity to ask your lecturers questions, participate in a live discussion, and have a robust learning session to help you make the most out of the webinar. However, if you are unable to attend the live webinar sessions due to unforeseen circumstances, you can view the recorded version here. There you have it, the MLMS in brief. There are lots more features and functions for you to explore on your own. So log in often, go through your material and discussion, as well as participate where you can.